Hello everyone and welcome back to Cody LUFC Crux. So today's video will be about the Leeds United versus West Ham at Ellen Road which took place last night um, which was a two all result which bearing in mind West Ham lost the last five games this means that it was a poor result overall from a lead side who desperately need to get those points on the table to avoid any scary relegation battle like we did have last season. So there were some positives to take from the game. So Nonto had a very good game playing just behind Rodrigo and he made us play with some width with his link up play with uh, Kresenko Somerville. Um, I gave him an 8 out of 10 for the match because I felt like he he did everything that he could have done. Um, like I said, the link up with Somerville allowed him to score the first goal. They they had some good passes interlinked together, um, which made the goal appear really, really succinct. And it was, it was a nice goal and a nice attack. Um, he was also strong and physical. Um, and battled hard uh, amongst the midfield so you know even though he's playing in more of an attacking uh, position in the midfield he also got back and helped Tyler Adams and uh, Rocker out which I thought was was great. Um, another positive for me was that Harrison is really showing that he should still be in contention for a start um, because I felt like the assist that for Rodrigo's goal was well timed. Um, Harrison was also making some really good runs and um, just just really getting in amongst it. I think obviously the way that Marsh lines us up in the four two uh, three one formation sometimes help shouldn't sometimes hinders Harrison because it takes some of that width away which Harrison likes to play with. Um, so. Yeah, I do think Harrison had a very good game. Um, also, Click, when he came on, he he controlled the ball. He was really good at running with it and keeping possession of it in the midfield, which I found that Rocker really struggled with last night. Um, Adams did slightly better, but even Adams had quite a, quite a difficult match last night. But I do think that was down partly to Declan Rice's... Uh, management of Tyler Adams I think they just really cancelled each other out in that midfield which resulted in them both having quite a a, a game of of struggles um the negatives of the match again this this was a slightly easier to do um there's no width to this team the team is not playing with that that width that we're used to we've got some wingers in Harrison uh, Somerville, Nonta can play on the wing, Aronson who also plays on the wing, who are just not getting to be played as natural wingers. They're getting squeezed into the centre of the pitch, which is making the pitch seem seem smaller in a sense, and I don't think that's working for us. We also have the problem of having a left back and a right back who operate so differently in the way that they play. So we've got Luke Aylin on one hand who really likes to interchange and gets forward. So in the first half in particular, I felt like Aileen and Aronson linked up quite well. There was a bit of crossover, but then that kind of leaves you a little bit vulnerable towards the back. And I think Strauch, he's not that type of player who gets forward and who makes them forward transitional runs, which again affects that balance of the team and sometimes affects the formation in which we're playing sometimes it feels like we are playing three at the back rather than four at the back because of the the balance of the right back and the left back um for, for me so i think that's that's one one thing to take out of the game strauch i think for me personally had one of his worst games at left back yesterday conceding um the penalty which uh paqueta scored um I do think, again, that was down to the balance of the team argument that we're having in the sense of it sometimes does feel like it was three at the back. But again, it, it wasn't it wasn't a great tackle. It was very clumsy. And I know that um, David Coote did play advantage and then brought it back with a, a VAR decision. 
but I, I think that it was it was a penalty and there was no point of us saying that it, it wasn't um I don't think Cock had the greatest games yesterday. He played uh, Aronson into trouble when he played out from the back um, and he was caught out Aronson in a pass that he was making to Rocker, which allowed uh, Skanaka to score. Um, a great goal, a great well-finished goal um, that he, he was able to put past Melier. Um, so I think overall... There were a lot of negatives to that match. The de the defence do need to be sorted and it needs sorting very quickly. I do think it's partly to do with this whole balancing situation in the sense of we, we need a left-back and a right-back who are very much on sync with each other in the sense of getting forward and getting back together um, and allowing those transitional movements to be made. And I do think we need that, that width um, to, to allow us to play a bit more freely and expansive football. Um, Jesse Marsh in his post-match conference called out um, bad decisions on the ball, which we all know it's it's not a secret. It's been a theme for the majority of this season. The the whole Melia is great. I think he's great in terms of doing the, the whole keeper thing. I think he's good at making saves, but his distribution is not there, which is meaning that we're having to play out from the back, which we, we just haven't got the back four which is capable of doing that. So we're getting Cooper and Koku as passing between each other and it makes really, really nervous watching in that sense. Um, so I do think that's something that we need to really be careful on. Um, otherwise, it ca could be a very, very, very long season um, indeed. And he did say that he wanted us to be a little bit more brave. I don't think it's the necessarily that we're not being brave. I just don't think we've got the players to be brave with at the moment. I think Luke Erling, to be fair, he did try and and come forward, but we haven't got that that on the 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 left hand side for that to be able to happen on that side. And it it's about having that balance between attack and defence, which is is sometimes a, a little bit difficult in these scenarios. Um, David Moyes in his post-match conference said that Somerville should have been sent off for the tackle on Calval. Um, having reviewed the tackle myself, um, we were very lucky in that sense. Um, it should have been a red card, and I'm surprised that VAR let it go for that for that incident. Um, I, I have rewatched the footage, and it, it and it was bad, and that is why Jesse Marsh, to be fair, did make that smart decision on taking off um Somerville just shortly after everything that had happened which I think was a fantastic decision for for him to make, have made um uh honorable couple of honorable uh mentions David Gold obviously uh sad to see him pass away from a West Ham perspective before the match um I'd I'll obviously rest in peace to him um you know, football, we come together in times um, like that. We, we we don't ever advocate for um, anyone to pass away or anything like that. So really, rest in peace, David Gold. Um, and another mention to Matthias Click, who um, deserved a better send-off than what the club gave him yesterday. I was quite sad at how the club dealt with that so I think they should have made an announcement at least straight after the match saying please stay behind to show appreciation to Matthias Click who uh, will believe in us um a great servant to the club really um em embodies everything to do with Leeds um a lot of fans have shown a lot of love to him um and he's going to be greatly missed and when he come on yesterday I think he showed that we will still miss him from a playing you know in the team perspective too um another one of Bielsa's players that that has left and our promotion winning side players that have left and that's very much getting thin on the ground now so I do feel like it's getting to the point where it's um the end of an era at Ellen Road um, and a new era is about to be dawned upon us and we're, we're currently living that. 
um but thank you so much Matthias Click for everything that you have done and been a fantastic servant to Leeds United and we do love your click sorry and yes PS Bob is forgiven um so talking about players out we we have had a player in um very recently and that that's a recent signing of Max Vober pronunciation of that name we will soon see if that was right but he is an absolute welcome addition as it'll allow us to have someone who can naturally play at left back which is what we've been crying out for for quite a while i know junior furpo is coming back but we all we all have our views on junior furpo and whether he's good enough or not so i think max Vober will give furpo that competition which he needs anyway um so I, I do think he'll be a great addition and I'll buy he can play at left back uh, at centre back too as well as left back. So I think again from a player point of view we've got that support in the sense of that he, he can play more than one position. Another one though from Red Bell Salzburg, which seems to be coming a bit of a feeder club of ours, which I don't mind that as long as they come in and they're actually good enough for the Premier League. Um, and Leeds United, so that that's the most important thing for me. But back to Max Vober, he has a, has experience um, in the Liga, the Eredivisie. Um, he played for Ajax there, um, and obviously the Austrian Bundesliga. So in twenty nineteen, when he signed for Red Bull Salzburg, he signed for twelve million euros, which was the most expensive. A player in history in the Austrian league so we have actually got a bit of a history maker there in terms of Max Vober who will be playing for um, our club. Of course I've seen clips of him I've seen little bits of Max Vober and he looks a player with great potential and um, I did say that's about Ramos Christiansen um, and when I've seen clips of him but the only way to judge a player and how they're going to fit into how we play is by seeing him play within our formation, our style of play. And I'm sure us as Leeds fans and the rest of the Ellen Road faithful, we will judge him within time to come and we will get behind him, especially at the very start. And we'll we'll see we'll see how long that that takes to um that takes to to last essentially, but. Thank you so much for listening. I will be back tomorrow when I will be doing a bit of a pre-match warm-up for the Cardiff City game. So it's an FA Cup third round. Um, we're away again. There's not really much surprise with that. And we um, we don't have the greatest record in, in terms of FA Cups and getting an, a bit of a cup run. It would be nice, but I think in terms of our Premier League survival status, I think that's more important. But thank you for watching, guys. Uh, please subscribe and comment below of any suggestions that you would like to see in these videos. I will be doing live streams very soon um, as well. So there'll be a mixture of live streams so then you guys can get involved in interacting with me and having a bit of an open discussion in terms of how we feel matches have gone in the future, which is so exciting. Um, but thank you all for watching and hope to see you all soon, um, whether that's going to be at Cardiff away or uh, Villa away, in which I will be attending. Um, so thank you very much again and look forward to speaking to you and seeing you all very soon.